Hey there guys, Paul here from TheEngineeringMindset.com Now in the last video we learned how refrigerants work and how they move thermal energy around a refrigeration system and in this video we're going to learn a bit more about refrigerants the different types, the previous, current and future refrigerants some of the names and numbers that you'll find with these uh, and also the pros and cons, especially the environmental being the ozone destruction and the global warming potential of these so if you're working in HVAC or studying to get into HVAC or even building services, then you really should know uh, these basics of the refrigerants. Guys, I'd just like to take a moment to thank Danfoss, our sponsor for today's episode. Danfoss is your go-to source for information and resources that can help you through the cooling industry's transition to natural and climate-friendly refrigerants. They have a deep understanding of all the new regulations and their effects, and they're ready to share their knowledge and solutions with you. They've also made helpful tools like the Refrigerant Retrofit Guide, the Low GWP tool, and also the Cool Selector 2 app, which is available for free on their website. You can access them now by visiting refrigerants.danfoss.com. Now when we talk about refrigerants, we mean a fluid which is able to easily evaporate and condense continuously, and so these are used in refrigeration and air conditioning systems. Now some of the historic and the current main types of refrigerants um, are into the following categories. Now we've got the CFCs, the, C, uh, the HCFCs, and also the HFCs. The CFCs stands for chlorofluorocarbons, the HCFC stands for the hydrochlorofluorocarbons, and the HFC stands for hydrofluorocarbons. So now you can see why these acronyms are used uh, very often because these names are just horrendously long and no one's gonna have time to say these. So instead, we're gonna just refer to them as the HFCs, or even just as the R number. Now you can also see up on the screen there is um, an example of each of the molecules um, for these and you can see here where the names come from. So you've got the fluorine, the carbon and the chlorine which makes up the chlorofluorocarbon. Uh, then you've got the chlorine, the carbon, the hydrogen and the fluorine which makes up the hydrochlorofluorocarbons and then uh, for the HFCs we've got the hydrogen, fluorine and the carbons. I've also just got an example of each of the different types of refrigerants that you'll find within these categories. Now these ones in the CFCs um, you probably won't come across as they're all banned now. Um, and if you do come across these you really need to uh, report this and, uh, and get these fixed and changed over um, to a, a more recent uh, refrigerant as these are horrendously bad for the environment. Now uh, the ones that you'll still probably come across, um, hopefully you won't but you, you probably will, um, is the R22s, R41As and the R123s. Again you should be retrofitting these um, if you haven't already and then the ones which you'll definitely still come across are the R134As, the R410As and the R23s etc etc. Now all of these have been or will be replaced in the future because of their effects on the environment. So if you're working in the industry or you're studying to get into the industry then in your career you will see a big transition over to the next generation of refrigerants. Now unless you're one of the scientists developing these refrigerants, then you don't really need to know what all the numbers and letters mean, um, but just know the basics. And that is that the R number just means uh, refrigerants. The numbers uh, just quantify how many of each atom they have within the molecule for that refrigerant, uh, with each different digit representing a different atom in its structure. And the little letter at the end um, just shows how symmetrical the isomer symmetry is. You can see down here we've got the R134A molecule um, and you've got the two carbon atoms. So this is just indicating out of a scale of blank A, B or C um, that this is fairly symmetrical so it's an A. If it was completely symmetrical then it would be a blank. So now we're starting to see the transition over into the new fourth generation refrigerants. These new refrigerants will have to be environmentally friendly and have very good thermodynamic properties. Now the market is heading, heading in the following directions. One route is through the natural refrigerants such as the carbon dioxide, the ammonia and also the hydro, hydrocarbons. Now these all have very low global warming potential, some even zero, um, and they all have very good thermodynamic properties as well. Now as they're natural they're also uh, fairly cheap to also manufacture so they seem pretty ideal. And now the other route which the market is going down is the route of the HFOs. Um, so these are stepping in to replace many of the HFCs as these have much lower global warming potential and they do not destroy the atmosphere or the ozone. Um, although some HFOs have found to be quite flammable. 
but with the right safety precautions, obviously you can use these completely safely. Now with the new laws and regulations which are coming in, you will have to start retrofitting your systems over to new refrigerants. And we'll look at more detail on how to do that in the next video. But one thing certainly to consider for now is the glide for the retrofit blend refrigerants. Some of these refrigerants will have quite a high glide. So consideration must be taken for the refrigeration system components to ensure that they will function optimally using these new refrigerants. Now there's a lot of guides available out there. Um, you can find many of them online. Um, and if you speak to you know, your refrigerant specialist uh, or supplier or even your service provider and equipment specialist such as Danfoss, then they will also be able to guide you on the right path for this. Now in the early days, natural refrigerants were used, but there was very little to almost no safety regulations. So scientists and engineers were using very dangerous refrigerants. Some of these refrigerants were found to be highly flammable. Some of these refrigerants were found to be extremely toxic. But eventually scientists came together and started thinking, okay, we really need some better refrigerants now. Then in the 1930s, they developed CFCs which were scientifically tested and were safer to use. They were non-flammable, non-toxic, non-corroding gases, which were very cheap to produce, so they seemed absolutely ideal. However, in the 1970s, they realized that the chlorine molecules within these were completely destroying our ozone layer, and so they were banned. And we'll look at more at this shortly. Then in the late 1970s, early 1980s, scientists developed HCFCs, which had far less damaging effects on the ozone. However, HCFCs were still able to damage the ozone layer because they contain chlorine molecules. To solve this, scientists came up with HFCs, which did not contain chlorine, so they wouldn't destroy the ozone layer. However, they still did damage the environment because they are greenhouse gases, and so they're also being phased out. So all of this combined is why the next, the fourth generation of refrigerants is now coming into the market to help us with our environmental issues. So what's wrong with the old refrigerants and why are they depleting the, the ozone layer? Well, the ozone depleting chemicals will rise up from our cities and all our refrigeration units, whether they're leaking uh, purposely or by accident, um, but they'll rise up into the stratosphere and the chemicals are then swept into the winds of the polar vortex. This polar vortex is a ring of fast moving air that circles the South Pole. And uh, the chemicals, are, chemicals have been building up here ever since the CFC refrigerants first started being used. This build up in the South Pole has been destroying the ozone layer, actually creating a hole. And the laws and the regulations for the chemicals used in refrigerants has been increasingly tightened over the years. And as this continues, the planet will have time to repair this hole. So again, this is why there's such a push for natural uh, and environmentally friendly refrigerants. So let's just briefly um, understand why and how the hole has been burnt within the ozone layer, and also what the, glow, uh, the greenhouse gas emissions are doing. So if we take a look at our planet, we'll see that first of all, we've got the troposphere, and then just above that, we have the stratosphere. And within the stratosphere is where we have the ozone layer. Now this ozone layer is what protects us from the sun's UV rays, which are really harmful and they cause cancer. Not all of the rays uh, are rebounded off of Earth. Some of them will come through and, and come down to the surface, um, but most of them are being bounced off and protected by this UV uh, absorbing band called the ozone layer. Now if we take a look within the ozone layer, we'll see that it's made up of the ozone molecule which has three oxygen atoms. These are the molecules which are rebounding all the sun's UV harmful rays. Now when the CFC molecules rise up, they join those winds and then they make their way up into the stratosphere. When the CFC molecules are up there in the stratosphere, the sun's UV rays will actually come through and they'll start to break the links of the chlorine molecules away from the CFC main body. When the chlorine molecules break away, it causes a chemical reaction. This chemical reaction means that the chlorine uh, atom actually steals an oxygen atom away from the ozone molecule, and then you uh, deplete the ozone layer, so there you have the chlorine molecules as well as the oxygen molecules. But the chlorine molecule will actually continue 
and it will head off to uh, start breaking down other ozone uh, molecules. And the more this happens, then a, a hole will actually form in there because now the ozone molecules are actually missing from that pot. And the longer this continues, the more holes will appear and the larger the holes will be. And this will allow more and more of the sun's harmful UV rays through. And clearly this is not a good thing. Now the other problem we face is the global warming potential. Now what should happen is that the sun's infrared rays uh, coming from the sun pass through our atmosphere, hit the surface of our planet, and are then are rebounded back off and sent into space, with some of them being reflected and staying within our atmosphere. However, within the atmosphere, we've got a build up of very dense greenhouse gases. Now these gases are known uh, to prevent the sun's infrared rays from passing through. So as the sun's rays come through, uh, they'll break through initially, but then uh, once they've lost some of their energy, they'll find it very difficult to actually break through and then leave our atmosphere heading back off into space. So some of them will get through, but then the more and more and more uh, will start to actually reflect and stay within our atmosphere, and this will increase the temperature of our planet. Now there are many things contributing towards these, not all of them are man-made, some of them are naturally occurring also. But as refrigerants are known to contribute towards these, and they're a man-made substance, then obviously governments all around the world uh, are working towards phasing these out in favour of more natural and uh, environmentally friendly options instead. Guys, I'd just like to take a moment to thank Danfoss, our sponsor for today's episode. Danfoss is your go-to source for information and resources that can help you through the cooling industry's transition to natural and climate-friendly refrigerants. They have a deep understanding of all the new regulations and their effects, and they're ready to share their knowledge and solutions with you. They've also made helpful tools like their Refrigerant Retrofit Guide, the Low GWP tool, and also the Cool Selector 2 app, which is available for free on their website. You can access them now by visiting refrigerants.danfoss.com.